remember my parent colony Solenopsis Invicta. As previously discussed, this colony started with a single queen cut from my backyard in Florida, grown in a test tube and eventually moved into a founding formicarium, where the number grew into thousands. The demand for space grew and the worker numbers exploded, so did their appetite. I remember starting with tiny mosquito corpses as their staple diet, <laughs> and quickly moving onto bigger prey like dubia roaches. But even then, the ants kept asking for more, more and more. It came to a point where I was throwing 5 to 8 super worms into the outworld every day. By then, it was pretty crazy how fast they were destroying the little bodies. The ants had gotten pretty good at immobilizing and eating their prey in a very efficient way by then. I no longer had to pre-kill any insects because by then there was no worker casualties and if there were some, the colony would barely feel it. It wouldn't matter by then if the numbers had dropped a little, the population was already at a booming point. The ants' higher demand for prey meant a higher demand for nutritional gut loading of said prey so I no longer had such available supply of insects to support the needs of the colony. Obviously, the colony ate lots of carbs and sugars as part of their routine diet. That could hold them for a little longer. I gave them a lot of honey, lots of fruits, and just little sugary substances that they could get their little uh, mouths on. <laughs> but the challenge was supplying the amount of protein they demanded. As a result, I began to look for a different type of meal that the wild may offer um, in my parents' farm and while looking at the chickens, I had an idea. No, I didn't mean the chicken itself, um, not Ants Canada, <laughs> but the maggots that were by her feet made me think of the detritivore nature of the ants. They like to eat um, dead decomposing stuff sometimes. So I found myself a drowned lizard that seemed fairly fresh in the pond and I decided it was perfect for the ants. Now, this being my first time feeding the ants something like this, I thought it was perfect subject to document. How long do you think it will take them to bring down the lizard to the bones? That's what I asked myself. So I went ahead and skinned it to help break down for the ants to go faster, help reduce the risk of a stinky problem in my animal room. Like I said, the ants work fast, but I was terrified the lizards would rot faster than the ants could eat. Okay, time for a little warning. Um, I have been told in the past that my interests can sometimes be a little gross and shocking, and I am trying to warn my viewers. So if you don't like gory or sensitive content, like let's say a decapitated and skinned lizard, um, now it's your time to skip this video, probably all together, or you can muster your courage and watch it through, cause it is pretty cool, but this is your warning. Still here? Sweet, let's continue to the cool stuff. I placed the lizard on a little homemade stand with paper underneath so we could better observe the process. Almost immediately there were workers that arrived at the zine to investigate. They seemed to divide into two groups. One that jumped right into action and then the other one to go back and inform the colony of their findings. It was pretty cool just to see them run back into the nest and tell the rest of the workers Yo, there's some food! Within five minutes, the workers had gone back down to the nest to relate the good news. And they had gone back to the feeding ledge with more workers to help deconstruct the body. One hour later, I decided to check on them. And holy crap, I was amazed. The ribs and the spine of the lizard were peeking through the many little bodies of the ants working. They were pulling fresh little by little, um, exposing the organs and structures of the lizard's anatomy. Um, I, I was just astonished to see how fast this was happening. Uh, my original 24 hour theory was brought down to maybe 12 hours. Uh, two hours since the body was discovered. Uh, we start to see a little more, more into the lizard. Uh, by now I just threw all my theories aside because this is going really freaking fast. Three hours in. At this point, we are four hours in, and the ants were basically crawling on a poorly articulated skeleton. The number of workers at the scene was way less than earlier, but the outworld was still booming with crawling bodies. The majority of the lizard had been broken down to small pieces and brought into the nest of the colony for further processing at this point, um, before being fed to the hundreds of brood waiting for the reptilian's nap. 
Um, the whole process was just incredible to me. Um, I had seen the ants work wonders both in real life and in the internet before, but never had I gotten a front view of the complete process of a fire ant colony feeding at this magnitude. Um, I knew my colony was getting big, but never did I expect them to be done in less than 24 hours. Yet here I was sitting next to an almost clean skeleton only 4 hours in. I'm very glad I got to see this so up close, but I'm even happier than that, that I was smart enough to record on video. I love sharing stuff as amazing as this with people, and I hope this video helps build a notion of how amazing these little insects can be. What makes this experience so awesome to me is that these same events are happening every day, at all times, all throughout the planet, right in our own backyards. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like it if you did. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, I do apologize to the people that I promised uh, in the past for another video on these fire ants. Uh, I do apologize for the long absence, you know, pandemic life, um, graduation, <laughs> parenthood, yada yada yada. Please subscribe if you want more of, from this channel. Um, and remember, just ant keeping is as easy as finding a queen in your own backyard. Take care.